They don't need to be coached. Just let them do it man to man. Man to man, Alan, don't be ridiculous. Having said that, we don't necessarily have to be there. It would probably be better if we weren't, wouldn't it? Well, the question isn't whether we should be there or not. The question is, do they want to talk to one another? Do they want to have a discussion? Henry wants to. What about Benjamin? It's no use asking his opinion. But it has to come from him. Benjamin has behaved like a hooligan. We are not interested in what mood he's in. If Benjamin is forced to meet Henry in a punitive context, I can't see the results would be very positive. Madam, our son is a savage. To hope for any kind of spontaneous repentance is fanciful. Right. I'm sorry. I have to get back to the office. You stay in it. You'll tell me what you've decided. I'm no use whichever way you cut it. Women always think you need a man. You need a father, as if they'd be any help at all. Men are a dead weight. They're clumsy and maladjusted. But you can see the F train. That's great. I'm so embarrassed, but, but I can't stay either. My husband has never exactly been a stroller dad. Oh, what a pity. It's lovely taking the baby for a walk. And it lasts such a short time. Oh, you always enjoyed taking care of the children, didn't you, Michael? Yes. You pushing the stroller. Yes, I, I did. So, what have we decided? Could you come by the house this evening with Henry at 7.30? 7.30. What do you think, Michael? Well, honestly? Well, go on. I think... Benjamin ought to come here. Yes, I agree. Uh, I don't think it's right for the victim to go traipsing around. He's right. Uh, personally, I can't be anywhere at 7.30. Uh, since you're no use, we won't be needing you. All the same, it would be better if his father were there. All right, but then it can't be this evening. Uh, yeah? There's no mention of this in the executive report, and no risk has been formally established. But there's no evidence. Tomorrow? I'm flying to The Hague tomorrow. You're working in The Hague? I have a case at the International Criminal Court. The main thing is that the children speak to one another. I'll bring Benjamin by, by here at, at 7.30 and we could leave them to have their discussion. No, you don't look very convinced. If Benjamin is not made aware of his responsibilities, they'll just look at each other like a pair of china dogs. It'll be a catastrophe. What do you mean? What do you mean, made aware of his responsibility? I'm sure your son is not a savage. Of course Benjamin isn't a savage. Yes, he is. Alan, this is absurd. Why say something like that? He's a savage. How does he explain his behavior? He doesn't want to discuss it, but he ought to discuss it. He ought to do any number of things. He ought to come here. He ought to discuss it. He ought to be sorry for it. Clearly, you have parenting skills that put us to shame. We hope to improve, but in the meantime, please bear with us. All right, this is idiotic. Let's not end up like this. I am only thinking of him. I'm only thinking of Benjamin. I got the message. Let's just sit down for another couple minutes. A little more coffee? A coffee, okay. Then I'll have one too, thanks. It's all right, I'll, I'll, I'll do it, Ronnie. I see you're a, a great art lover. Art, photographs, to some extent it's my job. Mm -hmm. I adore bacon. Ah, yes, bacon. Cruelty, majesty, <laughs> chaos, balance. That's right. Is Benjamin interested in art? Well, not as much as he should be. <laughs> uh, what about your children? We try. We try to fill in the gaps in the education system. We try to make them read, to take them to concerts and exhibits. We're eccentric enough to believe in the uh, soothing powers of culture. Oh, and you're right. So, Clafuti, is it a tart or is it a cake? Lizen tort, for example, I was just thinking in the kitchen. Is that a cake or is that a tart? Come on, come on, you can't leave that one last little slice. Clafuti is a cake. The pastry's not rolled out. It's mixed in with the, the fruit. You really are a cook. 
I love it. The thing about cooking is you have to love it. In my opinion, it's the only classic tart that's to say on a pastry base that deserves to be called a tart. What about you? Do you have any other children? A son from my first marriage. I was wondering, not that it's any of my business, what started the fight? Henry won't talk about it. Well, Henry refused to let Benjamin join his gang. Henry has he a gang? He called Benjamin a snitch. Did you know Henry had a gang? No. It's terrific. Why is it terrific? Because when I was his age, I had my own gang. Me too. And what does that entail? Five or six kids willing to sacrifice themselves for you like, like in Spartacus. Absolutely, like in Spartacus. Oh, who knows about Spartacus these days? Uh, they use a different model, Spider-Man. <laughs> anyway, you clearly know more than we do. Benjamin hasn't been as silent as you've implied. And do we know why Henry called him a snitch? No, sorry, stupid. That's a stupid question. First of all, I couldn't care less. And also, it's beside the point. We can't get involved in children's quarrels. And it's none of our business. No. On the other hand, what is our business is what unfortunately happened. The violence, that's our business. When I was Henry's age, I remember I had to fight Bobby Kopecky, who was bigger than me. One-on-one, -on -one, single combat. Oh, what are you talking about, Michael? What's that got to do with it? You're right. You're right. It's got nothing to do with it. We're not discussing single combat. The children weren't fighting. I know, I, I know. I just had a flashback. There's not that big a difference. Oh, yes, there is. Excuse me, there's a very big difference. There's a very big difference. What? Well, with Bobby Kopecky and I, we agreed to have a fight. Did you beat the shit out of him? Up to a point. All oh, right, can we forget about Bobby Kopecky? Would you allow me to speak to Benjamin? By all means. I wouldn't do it without your permission. Oh, speak to him. What could be more natural? Good luck. Why are you saying that, Alec? I don't understand you. Mrs. Novak. Veronica, we don't have to be so formal. Veronica, you're motivated by an educational impulse, which is very sympathetic. If you don't want me to speak to him, I won't speak to him. No, speak to him. Read him the riot act. Do what you like. I don't understand why you don't seem to care about this. Ma'am. Veronica. Of course I care, Veronica, enormously. My son has injured another child. On purpose. You see, th that's the kind of remark that gets my back up. Obviously on purpose. But that makes all the difference. The difference between what and what. That's what we're talking about. Our son picked up a stick and hit your son. That's why we're here, isn't it? This is pointless. Yes, she's right. This kind of argument is pointless. Why do you feel the need to slide in on purpose? What kind of message is that supposed to be sending to me? Listen, we're on a slippery slope. My husband is desperate about all kinds of other things. I'll come back this evening with Benjamin and we'll let them sort them, themselves out naturally. I'm not in the least bit desperate. Well, I am. Th there's nothing to be desperate about. Yes, there is. Don't make any statement. No comment. No, of course you can't take it off the market. If you take it off the market, you become responsible. The minute you take Antril off the market, you're admitting liability. There's nothing in the annual accounts. If you want to get sued for falsifying the executive report and get shit canned in two weeks, take it off the market. Last year on Parents' Day, wasn't it Benjamin who was in that play? Charlie Vance. Charlie's well, hands. Think about the victims later, Murray. Let's see what the shares do after the annual meeting. He was extraordinary, yes. We are not going to take the medicine off the market because two or three people are bumping into the furniture. Don't make any statements for the time being. Yes, I'll, I'll call you back. I remember him very clearly in Charlie's aunt. Do you remember him, Michael? Yes, yes. <laughs> he was hilarious when he was in drag. <laughs> They're panicking. They, they got the media up their ass. You have to prepare a press release. Not something defensive. On the contrary, uh, not at all. Go out all guns blazing. You insist that Varenz Farmer is, is the victim of a destabilization attempt two weeks before its annual shareholders meeting. Where does this paper come from? Why did it have to fall out of the sky right now? Etc. and so on. Uh, don't say anything about health problems. 
Just ask one question. Who's behind this report? Right. They're terrible, these pharmaceutical companies. Profit, profit, profit. You're not supposed to be listening to my conversation. You're not obliged to have one in front of me. Yes, I am. I'm absolutely obliged to have it here. Not, not my choice, believe me. They dump any old crap on you without even giving it a second thought. In the therapeutic field, every advance brings with it risk as well as benefit. Yes, I, I understand that. All the same, funny job you have. Meaning? Michael, this has nothing to do with us. Funny job. <laughs> and what is it you do? I have an ordinary job. What is an ordinary job? I told you, I sell frying pans. And doorknobs. And toilet fittings, lots of other things. Ah, toilet fittings, now we're talking. That's really interesting. Alan. Well, it's, it's really interesting. I'm interested in toilet fittings. Why shouldn't you be? How many types are there? Two different systems, gravity and pressure assist. I see. Depending on the feed. Well, yes. One comes down from above, one comes up from below. Yes. I could introduce you to a stock manager who specializes in this kind of thing, if you'd like. You'd have to leg it out to Secaucus, though. You seem to be very on top of the subject. Are you intending to punish Benjamin in any way? You can carry on with the plumbing stories a little more appropriate setting. <laughs>